Where are all my friends? Angel Fonseca. Did I do it right? You did it right. Yeah. All right. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> Bro, I'm excited for this one. Couple, couple things to call out here in the beginning. One, we're doing it at Race Service. That's right. Which is something that I'm actually really happy about because a lot of people that know me know that I work here at Race Service, but the podcast is kind of separate and it's not necessarily intentional. Like it's my like side thing that I do, but I feel like we met because of Race Service and we just did a Race Service project together. So it's only fitting to do it at race service. I mean, I agree. I like the vibe here. I'm, right? ha I'm happy to be here. It's always nice to just, I feel more relaxed. I'm sort of Yeah. I feel, you know, I, I feel like my career of mine is still going, but it doesn't feel like work, which is nice. Yeah, we like that. Well, I like that too because, yeah, like I've, I don't think I've ever done a Where Are All My Friends at RS. We did like a NASCAR podcast here and it really got my gears going. That's sick. It's something that I want to do more of. So I felt like this was the right time to try it. But in saying that we're trying it, if you hear like a random car drive by or like outside noise, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, we're I mean, doing it's, all, it. it's all part of the vibe of race service, right? It is, yeah. it is. But outside of that, I'm excited to be doing the podcast because I have a moment of loving the internet and connecting with you where I've seen some of your work on just like IG Explore, stuff like that. You know, you like all the same cars, you like a certain style of photography, people kind of come up. So I think I'd seen a little bit of your work and then this Porsche project was coming up with South by Southwest and your name comes up as one of the photographers. And I was like, yo. <laughs> so like instantly I like go on IG, follow you. And I'm like, we got to do a podcast. And I wasn't sure. It was like pretty early into process. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if you were in LA or if you were in Canada, but I was like, I'm just going to hit you up. I hit you up. I think you're in Canada at the time, but it all kind of works out where we do the Porsche project. And this is like, for those who are watching and listening, this is like days after we got back. <laughs> So I really want to hear your story, but I also think it'll be really fun for us to talk about what we just did and experienced. Sure. Because we both kind of had a different experience. Yeah, of for South sure. Park. Yeah. I was hosting and moderating panels, but you were like the talent of Porsche, where you did this really dope guest editorship with our friend Sydney, where you took a 911 convertible, drove it from California to Texas, and then did like a mini documentary there. Yeah. And also shot a bunch of your own photos that were on the Porsche channel. The reason that I'm saying all of this before I'm getting in and letting you talk and share your story <laughs> is I want to set the stage for how important that is because it's a really cool milestone for a creator to get noticed by a brand like that and to have a, a moment like that. And right before we started recording, your brother was telling me just like a little bit of how much you've invested in yourself to get there. So that's why I wanted to lay all of that out because I think any creator listening to this, I, I would assume, I don't know your full story, but yeah. I think the story will be inspiring for any creator out there who's trying to get on the map and get noticed and you've now had this little wave of success and a moment that'll be really fun to talk about. That is my spiel. Thank you, spiel, spiel. Thank you for being here. I'm hype. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm pumped. I'm, I remember getting your message and I always check my, my DMs just to see like what's popping. Mm -hmm. And I see Andrew Cram. Hey man, would love to would love to have you hop on a podcast. I was like, yeah, down. Like, why <laughs> it was would it, so like, easy. Like, why would I not be down? But I didn't know why, how you found me, what was happening. I was back in Toronto, uh, actually helping my mentor set a shoot for Peter McKinnon. Oh, crazy. so as that was going on, it was like already crazy going on there. I get this email, Porsche X South by Southwest, and I was like, what is this? What's happening? <laughs> I like googled it, found no information, and I was like, it says it's in March. I was like, I don't know. They're like, we'd love to hop on a call. So I hopped on a call. Next thing you know, it's like, hey, like you signed this NDA. Like you can't tell anybody. I was like, sure. And then it goes, we want you to do some photography for us. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like, without a doubt. I mean, it's always been a dream to work for like Porsche. Like Porsche is number one. Yeah. It's one of the first cars I fell in love with as a kid. So for them asking me to take over their channel, it's just, it's, it's still overwhelming. I'm, I still hasn't sit in like at all. It's properly. oh sick. And again, like that's why I like kind of prefaced and said all of that because that's like that dream channel for you, that dream brand. And I think it doesn't matter if anybody's listening or watching and they have a different dream brand. Everybody can relate to that feeling of I've looked up to this thing and like I've loved the work of X person. Yeah. And now I get to do something with them. Like that feeling yeah. is fucking sick. I, I like it's hard to describe, but it's a it's a very, very nice high. Yeah. For sure. And the funny thing is, is that I remember I was doing my vision board. Uh -huh. I do a visual word every year. For Dude, I'm about that. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. 2023, 
I, I saw like a video on TikTok and it was like, you have one side where you write like everything you want, you're going to accomplish. And then once you accomplish it, you move it onto the, so you start on the left side, you move it onto the right. And I wrote down, Portia will hire me to do some photography. No. But like, I like, it's just like out there. Like I, I just put like crazy dreams out there. And I'm like, you know, like if it happens, it happens. But like it happened and I was like, whoa like this is like insane like it's like three like it's like three months into the year like yeah like what do you mean oh my god just in you saying that too i'm like fuck we're gonna get along like there's gonna be a lot to talk about here because i'm not like whenever i talk about vision boards or manifesting and goals i don't want to be the cheesy person that says it of like just say it out loud and it'll happen like you have to follow it with work for sure but I really do think there's a power into thinking it and then speaking it into the universe and then writing it down and to look at that daily and to remind yourself what that that line and that goal look, looks well, like. Well, yeah, I guess it, it, it kind of programs your brain to stay on track. And honestly, when you do stuff like that, you're naturally going to be doing things that work towards that goal, yes. which is really weird, but it works in a sort yes. of way. Yes. I heard something, and I'll, I'll butcher the saying of it, but just the idea of what is the type of person who is the type of person that would shoot for Porsche using that example yeah and then you can kind of reverse engineer it and you're like oh okay well that person would probably have work that looks like this they would talk about the brand like this whatever not trying to be somebody that you're not but just like inventing yourself in a way where you align with the goals that you want and presenting that to the world and I think that when you do that well, the world kind of notices. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the thing about Porsche is that they're super cool. They let me shoot on film. That's like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're like, we want you to shoot on film. And I was like, wow. Like, you want me to shoot the way I shoot? Yeah. For your brand? <laughs> no problem. Right. And you do kind of have a unique style. Like, it's like you are a rare breed where you like the overexposed, harsh light. Yeah. I don't know how that came about. I think it's because of my mentor. My mentor, he he photographs um, candy, food, just uh, still photography. And he likes that overexposed style. So I took that element, but incorporated it in my own style in a sort of way. I, how I do it is I take a bunch of different inspiration like songs movies yeah like uh like uh, someone broke up with me and like put that all in like in a basket yeah and be like how do i create a body of work that elevates all of this that inspires me you think about that even in photography all the time no way all the time it's like it's like my mom like says something and i'm angry i don't like i have like if i feel something like i'm in a mood to create photos and then i'll come up with some concepts and i'll be like how can other people relate to this but through photography well, I don't have to say anything. They just look at the photo and they're like, I get that. Damn, that's art. Like that's like communicating through yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I mean, medium. I'm I'm very bad with like I have a learning disability when it comes to writing and speaking. Interesting. So I art is the way for me to just like express all that. Cause I have a high percentile in visual. Whoa. Like I'm in like the top one percent when it comes to like visual learning. But when it comes to writing and speaking, I'm like in the low percentile. So no it's so it way. I guess it's like a benefit. In for art, but like in life in general, like kind of sucks. But I, you learn how to adapt. But like, uh, like an example of that, just because I'm so curious, is like if somebody taught you how to load film in a camera, theoretically, if you're reading about it or something like that, you're not going to understand no. it. And then somebody shows you once, and you're like done. Done. It's like I like pick it up like this. Like I remember like anything. Like really? it's like it, it might like it just it's weird the way it wires my brain. Whoa. Yeah. That's fucking tight. So like the way I see things, I'm very particular and I'm very picky. So even with my own work, like I'll like do something. I'm like, it's, it has to be like this way and I have to edit it this way. And then I'll hold on to it because I'm like, I'm so like in my head about it. I'm like, it's not the best. But, but how do you control that with film? Like film is this thing that's like such a variable. Uh, you only have one chance. I know. I, I guess you kind of learn how to master it in a, to a certain extent. The overexposed and harsh style kind of helps that. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, that like, it's my trademark now in yeah. a sort of way, which is nice. Yeah. Because then like, I'll post something, people are like, oh, that's like, that's Iho Flacco's work, you know? So like, how do, I guess like kind of staying true to me, but also exploring different stuff. Like I would just like do some other stuff that like isn't within my niche and just to see how people just like, to, like it. Fuck around. What did yeah. you just call yourself? Hijo Flaco. That's fucking. <laughs> I mean, that's how you pronounce it. Yo, my friend, there was one time, one guy, I shot his uh, SL300 Gullwing. Yeah. He was talking to my friend and he goes, yo, where's your friend? He's all, Hydro Flash. So what? Who? 
He goes, oh. So now I told some people about that, and that's what they call me now. It's just, that's why you said it today in the voice. <laughs> where you're like, Yo, what up, Hydro Flask? Hydro Flask. Yeah, that's just, it's just a running joke me and my friends have. Dude, Ijo Flaco goes yeah, hard, yeah. though. Ijo Flaco, that's how, that's how you say it. Everyone just says Hydro, Hydro, Hydro Flaco. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> so maybe take me back to wherever it was in your head that you maybe found your thing. Like, was it always photography? Did you have something else first? Like, like how did it come to be? How did you find, like, yourself in your art? I used to work at, at this uh, fine dining restaurant back in Toronto. And one of my friends, manager, had a camera. And he was taking some pictures of me. And I'm like, yo, this is fire. And I was like, yo, I want to get into this. And, like, I just started, like, just exploring, just seeing. I was also, like, nearing the end of career of my, of my soccer or football is what they would call it in Europe. Yeah. Um, I had a really bad uh, ankle injury, tore two, two ligaments. And then I messed up my shoulder, rotator cuff injury. I was like, you know, I don't know if this is for me. So I like full on quit. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. So then I started, I started doing photography on my iPhone. So my brother suggested me just to see if I liked it. You know what I mean? Like I just quit something like I did for like 10 years. Yeah. So I started shooting on my iPhone, started really getting into it, started really liking it. And I was like, you know what? I want to continue this. What iPhone were you, what do you have then? Dude, I, I shot on an iPhone. I think it was an iPhone 7. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so it just, was like dialed then. Like I think around yeah. the iPhone 4 was when people started to be like, damn, you can like get some great photos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there was like the iPhone 7. So that's why I started, I shot that for like a year. No shit. Just like building an eye. No that's all shit. I just worked on was just understanding if I could build an eye. Wow. Just see things and like, just like editing was not even like, I was just, can I have the conceptual mind of just converting this? Right, like composing an image, like seeing something exactly. and kind of having your own unique view yeah. of it. And did you? Like, was that oh, no. challenge? Okay. Oh, that sucked. Really? It was so bad. Really? Yeah, and, my, and I had a photography uh, mentor. My first photography mentor was my high school teacher. Uh-huh. And he, he was very, he, he was successful in photography, but he just didn't enjoy it. So he just like, he just teaches it now. He was like, I see some potential in you. I'm going to push you. And man, did he put me in some very uncomfortable situations. Really? Just to learn. And I hated every minute of it. He would just like rip on, he'd be so hard on me. But I'll take it. Be like, all right. Like, how do I improve? And you just rip into it more and more. Damn, what kind of stuff? Because again, like I'm obsessed with like these moments. Like what stood out to you? What did you learn from him in that? It's important to portraying your story. And really like, because like it's, you only have like a chance, one chance for people to see something and then to be like, all right, if it connects or not. So understanding that, but also not all of my work is going to connect with everyone I want it to. Like it's going to be towards a certain audience. If you don't like my work, you're just not my audience. But how do I tap into that audience? So I'm always curious onto expanding and hitting different areas and avenues. But like, was the lesson more of you only have one chance to show yourself, so put your best foot forward? Yeah, it's, it's, it's about like, how do I impress other people? And he was really, really hard on me, so I tried really hard mm. to... To just get one like, yes, like, all right, this is good. Mm -hmm. Like just getting that was more satisfying than just even taking the photo. Wow, because for yeah. me, it's always it's always the drive of just like, all right, like I made myself proud because I, I know I can do it. So it, it motivated me to just, I guess, avoid the noise yeah, and just to stay focused on the track that I wanted to go. That's fucking bars. That's valuable, <laughs> dude. That's crazy. But it's true. Yeah, for sure. You're mastering that craft, shooting on an iPhone 7, not so much worrying about editing, but finding your eye, yeah. learning from him. Then what happens from there? My brother gave me his camera. Then I started learning how to edit. I started learning how to do Photoshop. I started working with my my now mentor. He brought me on because we had a friend that worked at the restaurant. He's like, oh, it's my photography friend. I know you're getting into photography. You should work together. So I started working with him and just learning so much through him. Yeah. And just like asking so much questions, not being afraid. Why do you do this? Why does this work? Why do you use the pen tool? Like, what do you think of here? And like just understanding and like really building a professional eye. Yeah. So from there, I just started understanding that. What camera did you get? Oh, dude, I, I had a, Ni a Nikon D7000. Uh, Okay, so like the like almost entry level crop sensor. Digital yeah, crop sensor, entry SLR. level like SLR film, uh, like digital camera. So I started on digital. Interesting. And yeah, I was curious. It was, and I, it, I didn't feel connected. Like I was able to create photos for what I had. I think the thing about me and my family is that you master what you have. It doesn't matter if you have the best. Just work with what you have. Like don't make excuses. Just work with what you have. So sick. So that's what I've 
now it's just like that's what i live up to it's like it works for me why would i i don't need the best thing yeah like this is just how i'm comfortable with i love that dude i love that you started an iphone 7 because i think a lot of times now especially you can go on the internet look for inspiration find it and then realize that they're shooting on like red cameras yeah video or like the spiciest sony's and canons and whatever cameras and you're like oh the barrier to entry is just too far never mind yeah but that's not it no a great photographer can use anything and like using what you have like that's cool yeah did you uh I'm always curious of this too. Like, did you grow up with like not that much given to you or like did your family like have it like that? Because I think no. that like what you're saying yeah. there kind of comes from like a necessity level. I grew up with whatever we have is whatever we have. Like yeah. just like maximize like everything that we have. It was kind of hard because like there'd be times where like kids would like get new shoes, new pants and we'd just be like, yeah, this is, this is what I have. Like, and I just like, you know, like I just got used to it. Yeah. And like Christmas was always hard for me just because like, yo, I got this like, cool bike for Christmas. What'd you get? And it's like, oh, you know, I got some cool stuff. Everyone like, gets the video game everyone system. Gets, like, this, and the, you're just like, 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 I just had like, you know, like I got some socks and stuff. Yeah, but like dude, yeah. now I'm like pumped if I get socks. Yeah. Like back then yeah. as a kid, I was like, oh man, some so-. now I was like sick. Yeah. Like dude. my other four pairs have a holes. They yeah. can throw those out. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's too real. Yeah. Damn. Okay. So, all right. So you meet your proper mentor, you have a Nikon entry level SLR camera and you're asking questions like crazy. Yeah. Like, are you like his backup shooter? Are you doing like weddings and stuff? Or like, are you, are you doing like a professional application or like what, what's that look like on a day to day? What would happen is that there'd be times where he'd be like, yo, I need you to work. So I'd miss school. No, I'm going to go work. No shit. And there'd be times where I was his second assistant. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm honestly really grateful for him because he would bring me on and I would do nothing. I'd just mm. sit there and learn. Mm. And he'd pay me just to be there. And I was like, why am I here? Mm. Why am I getting paid? Yeah. And it, for, for so long, I didn't, I didn't understand it. I mean, it hit like, like maybe like two years ago. I was like, it's because I'm hungry. I don't care. Like I, I'm just being there was exciting for me. And he's like, I remember he told me, he was like, hey man, like it's not gonna be fun. Like you're gonna have to take out the trash and like do errands for me. So like, this is sick. Yes, you know I mean, like dude. I didn't care. I was like, I'll take out the trash. Like I'll go like like drive out to like drop off like you know prints and stuff. Like I didn't mind. Like it was just it was different from what I had in the restaurant life. And I didn't like the restaurant life so much that I got to a point where like this is like. Like, I'm happy doing this yeah. because, like, I really enjoy this. Yeah. So I didn't care what it was. I and you had a what. taste of something you didn't like. So then to be excited about photography didn't matter if you were at the bottom. You're like, this is a hell of a lot better than exactly. what it was. Exactly. It's like I can work my own hours. I can shoot what I want to shoot. And I'm like, he's pretty successful. And if I'm connected with him, maybe I could be on the right track because I'm in the same room as him. Yeah. So, like, why don't I just keep going forward? That's sick. Yeah. That's super sick. Okay, so then what were you shooting with him? Like when you were when you were shadowing, when you were second shooter, like what kind of work did he do? He so he did a lot of uh, commercial like furniture, mm-hmm. headshots, um, still lifes of like food, candy. Oh, okay, yeah. So that that's the type of stuff he did. And did that also teach you like a much more technical application of like the the technical side of photography, like yeah. ISO aperture, right lenses, right lighting, like just like that side of it? I think what more it taught me is about the post-production, how to oh. Photoshop more and oh. how to get most in camera so you do less editing. Cool. The ISO and aperture stuff, I actually learned because I started shooting on film. Oh, crazy. So, yeah, so my dad had a film camera and the guy who I used to work at the restaurant He's like started shooting on film and he started teaching me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to shoot on film because I'll learn how to use aperture and everything right. Yeah. Because I don't know. That's the only reason why I started shooting film. It wasn't like I wanted to. Like it, I just wanted to be better oh, at photography. Wow, right. And film is so unforgiving. Yeah. Where it's like if you don't get those oh, three God. right, like it's, you don't have an image. Garbage. Dude, my first role is black. Yeah. It was just so dark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think of so much of your work in the automotive space, but... It's it's more than that. Mm-hmm. When did you kind of find your thing? Like when when were you like, oh cool, this is what I want to shoot, or this is what I shoot best? Um, I think it's when I was in first year uni and I got my medium format camera. Okay. That's kind of what changed everything for me. Yeah, I picked it up and I just kind of knew what I was doing. It just I was able to just just create photos that I guess aesthetically looked better, but I found it more. I guess it's like having equipment that connected me so deeply until I could just create. Yeah. So I started shooting cars just for fun. 
Interesting. Like it was like I've always liked cars because my brother. Like we used to go to car meets when I was like like five. And yeah. Like, we go to car meets and then we go go karting. Sick. And it was like the best thing ever. Yeah. So I just like I always connect with that. So that's kind of what brings me happy in doing this kind of stuff for the automotive stuff because it's all full circle. Yeah. It's just like wow. Like as a kid, like I've always wanted to be seeing these cars. Now I'm like actually shooting them and driving them. Yeah. It's like so sick. I think, and it's not just cars that the world and industries are changing. Or you don't necessarily have to own the thing. There's a lot of ways to interact with your favorite thing exactly. that then bring you to the table in just as legitimate of a way. And I'm really curious of that again, because I kind of like to break down the walls of like, you don't have to own the fucking Porsche yeah. to shoot the Porsche. Exactly. Like, so did you ever aspire to or like build tuner cars or do anything like that? Or was it really just that like, this was your way to enter that with photography? I mean, I've always enjoyed cars and I've always watched it growing up, but photography did help me get avenues and access to all these rare cars just to see in person. Yeah. And I like, I remember when I, when my friend last year shot, uh, set up a shoot for an RWB. Yeah. So stoked. Yeah. It was like always the one car I've always wanted to shoot. Yeah. I was like, this is like on my holy grail. It was like yeah. a Countach, an F40, an RWB. Sick. Like if I could do those three, I'm happy. Yeah. And you did it. And I did it. And it was like the best thing ever. I was like oh, so yes. sick. And now I just need to see him build it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right? I just need to see Nakai build the thing and yeah. then I'll be complete. And for the listeners, it's so funny. Like sometimes I like, I worry. I'm like anyone listening to this, some people know how deep into cars I am. And then others are like maybe more on the music or the entrepreneurial <laughs> side. So an RWB is a really wide body Porsche 911 that is made by one really rad Japanese dude. Yeah. And it's like this like really gritty kind of like Yeah, vibe he just it's like, like super DIY. He's but they come super DIY. And like yeah. he does it by hand. He doesn't teach anyone his art and you have to fly him in to do it. It's pretty rare, like yeah. the car itself, because I guess it's his own art form. Right. It is. So yeah. Yeah. That's that's cool. Like in talking to you as well, like it it really reminds me how much you can be an artist in your own form and master that craft. Like it's not just traditional, like, oh, you're a painter, you're this, you're that. Like everybody has a way of expressing themselves via something. For sure. Yeah. Also, as we're sitting out right now, you're 22? 22, just turned 22. Yeah, damn. Happy birthday. Thank you. Um, oh shit, your birthday was at South By, wasn't it? Was it was at South By. Yo, yeah. yeah. So you're like, we're talking at a pretty early stage in your career. Like it's going to continue to grow. I hope so. So you're still finishing university or college yeah. right now. There's a moment as well, or like there's something that I want to talk about where I'm curious from the commerce side, from like the, oh shit, I can do this for a career moment. Because that's also another scary thing that for I think sure, is a yeah. common theme with everyone. Yeah, you have a hobby. Yeah, you have a passion. Maybe you're good at it. But then like there's the reality of life where you're like, sick, must be nice, but I have to work at this restaurant to make it happen. Yeah. Did you have any moments or lessons that kind of opened your eyes to this could be a profession? There's a couple of moments. I remember when I first got into university, my program is very competitive. It's very hard to get in. Um, everyone else I knew that applied didn't get in. And I was the only one. No way. Out of like people that I knew in my group at the time. I think the acceptance rate is like 70%. I could be wrong. Damn. Yeah. So it's like, it's like 120 kids I started off with. Like 1,500 applied. Wow. And they took like, and they took me and I was like, all right, cool. And like, my mom was happy. I was happy. But obviously like my parents were like, yo, like, I don't know if this is going to work out. Yeah. And then I got into uni. I was like, just give me four years. If I suck and I don't do anything with my life, I'll go back into school, figure it out. Yeah. But I really didn't want, like, I was like, okay, I have four years to really do something. So I worked my butt off because I was like, I don't want to do anything else. And then in uni, in first year, I won Best in Show for uh, one of my photographs of a, I think it was a 500 SL Benz. Sick. Shot through a window with like, I guess like, you know, in the morning where you get like the droplets on the- Yeah, like the dew. Yeah, yeah. the dew with the sunset hitting on red interior. It was just like, it's it's still like, it's, I guess, one of like my first like iconic photographs of my career. Yeah. So like, that, so once I won that, I like, I'm like, okay, you know what? I can actually do something with this. Like I was going to quit actually before that. I was thinking no about quitting. Yeah. And then that like happened. And I was like, no, I, I'm on the right track. Dude, I was like, it was just like a wake up call. That's like, I can resonate or I can relate to that moment really well. Because like, even with this podcast, like I call it a passion project, yeah. right? But it means a lot to me. For sure. But it's a lot of work. Like to to set it up, to schedule the episodes, to get them out every week, blah, blah, blah. It's a lot. And there'll be moments where I'm just like, fuck, man, like, is it worth it? 
And then I swear to God, like clockwork. <laughs> now I'll be like, I don't know. And somebody like, it'll be a DM or it'll be like a random person. They'll stop me like, is that your podcast? And I'm like, yeah. And as soon as like, dude, I love that one episode. It inspired me to keep going or something like that. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, I have to, I, yeah, you, you, yeah, you have can't to stop. keep going. Yeah, like, exactly. It's like, it becomes bigger than you. Yeah. So you had that moment where you're like, fuck, I can't. No. Yeah. I had that moment. I was like, all right, like there, now I'm at the point where there's too many people depending on me. I have to do this for them. Yes. Yes. Right? Like, so I was like, all right, like, let's, let's see where it goes. Damn. Okay. So then, uh, in continuing the story of like realizing that it could be a profession. So that's a moment. What yeah. other moments did you have? COVID happened. Okay. I was able to work because my, my mentor had another assistant, mm -hmm. but he was like, oh, I can't because of my grandma, understandably. Mm -hmm. So he goes, oh, you want to work? My parents were super down. I was like, yeah. I was like, we have no jobs. Mm -hmm. So I was taking government money mm -hmm. and I was like working mm -hmm. and it was like, and I was like busy. It was like weird. I was so slammed. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, I was like doing good enough that I was like, I'm making more than what I usually make at my restaurant. Oh. So I quit. Oh my God. So that one moment where you take the risk, you do it and it's like, oh fuck, I'm making more. Yeah. Doing it's like, it's like. weird. And like, I'm living at home. So I like, I can fall back. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I can really like, just really try. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. Cause I still have food in a bed to go home to. Yes. But I'm like, what's, I'm like, I, ha I can afford to take a risk. Yeah. I was like, I was like 19 at the time. See, that's cool that you had that self-awareness because I think that that's a huge benefit you have when you're young is you can take those crazier risks. Cause if, even if you completely fail, you still kind of have that yeah. food in bed situation. Exactly. Like, and I'm like it. 20. Like I can like, I still yeah. have like so much so life. So much yeah. life. Yeah. That's amazing. Another thing you said, you come back to mentors a lot. And I think that that's cool. I'm very big on that. I've had a lot of really important mentors in my life. I think call it a mentor or not, meeting people that set a bar and that inspire you and yeah. that share wisdom is really important. Oh, for sure. Something that I want to continue to pass on to anyone I meet. When did that click to you that that was so valuable? I think once I was in uni and I was seeing how other people didn't have that access of mm -hmm. asking someone who already has been there yeah. and failed yeah. for advice is when I was like, all right, like this is really valuable. Yeah. There's not a lot of people have that. And also having a good mentor is very rare as well. And how did you identify that? They really pushed me to just do my own thing. Like, we want you to do your own thing, mm -hmm. but I'm also going to teach you how mm -hmm. I do it. Yeah. You just take whatever you take. Yeah. So I think that was good. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, you can kind of tell like when someone like knows what they're doing or if they're just like full of shit. So then COVID, you're making money. Is there anything else in that? I kept flying down to LA. That's kind of what. Oh, that's what changed another part of my career. Talk to me about this. On my 18th birthday, my dad was like, hey, you should go down to LA. We have family down there. Okay. And I was like, cool. Who are they? Because you never met them. And I was like, I've always wanted to go to LA. Yeah. And I was like, I've always wanted to travel. And I looked at the ticket, it was like 300 bucks. Bought it the same day. Never met these people. And I was like, let me just go meet people. So I went down and I, my dad's like, you want me to come with you? I was like, no, nah, I want to go alone. I just wanted to travel alone just to see. Yeah. Traveled alone. Best feeling ever. Yeah. Hung out with my family and they were like super cool. And we got so tight. They're like, come back. So then after I was able to fly back with COVID, I flew back. And there was this one guy named Six Tiff, really good homie of mine right now. Mm. Like I love his work. And I was like, and I was like, yo, like I'm planning to come back in LA like seven months. You down to kick it? He goes, Yeah, man, no problem. So I was like, I'm gonna take this trip just because of him. So I like took a risk. And like, I like booked it and everything. He wasn't replying. I was like, all right, I mean, I'll figure it out. I get here to LA. The first day I get here, he messages me. He goes, yo, let's hang out next week. I'm free. And then he just like, I met him and I like met a bunch of different other people, a bunch of different other photographers. And he like, he changed my life. He like, no he was like, yeah, man, like come here. I want you to move out here. So he just started like helping me out down here. And then I just, I just, I guess I kind of made my name a little bit here down here as well. No so way. Now I just come back a lot <laughs> dude okay well that is like such a crazy lesson of taking that risk and investing in yourself yeah but that risk of like it's not guaranteed it's not come to la no. i have a check waiting for exactly. you i have a job waiting for you it's just you saying i have a feeling exactly and doubling down on that i was like a big feeling i was like you know what like this guy is like someone I really look up to. Like yeah. this works really good. And he's like, like he can potentially give me work. Yeah. 
I was like, or he could hate me. <laughs> right. Who knows, right? Yeah. So I booked a flight and I was like, let's see. And I just, I felt good. Like I, I like I knew it was gonna work out. Yeah. Even if he wasn't replying for me, I knew it was gonna work out no matter what. Yeah. Like I was just so so invested into like, no, this is it. Like this is gonna happen. Yeah. I'm just convincing myself that it's gonna be okay. And Dude, it worked out. That is so valuable. It's insane. Like that, that is a lesson. That is a life lesson. Yeah. I talk about Los Angeles so much because I moved here from Florida, and for my career, it was the important move. But do you think that that lesson, it has to be bigger than just LA, right? It's just the fact of like, if you're in your hometown and you see a different area that's doing the thing that you care about, right? Yeah. Because I, I think that's cheesy to say like, oh, go to LA and your life yeah. changes. Like that's yeah. not it, I don't <laughs> think. But I think it's the people, right? I think it's I've, going to where the other people are. Kind of the way I've grown up and like the way I've been in high school, like people didn't, they didn't match my energy. But yeah, it wasn't so liked because they're like, oh, Angel's doing photography and he thinks he sees all this. Oh, and yeah. I was just like, just wanting to make it. Mm -hmm. But I was like so ahead of the game, just like the way I thought because of my brother. Yeah. I wasn't able to connect with anybody. So everyone thought I was crazy and weird. But then I come here, people don't know me from my past. Mm. They, they get a fresh perspective. Right. So I'm able to start fresh. Oh, which shit. Which is why I love coming down here because it takes all that noise I have back home. I come back here and I can just really be myself. Holy fuck. A, a new version of what I've built myself, I could just be me. Right. And just feel nice to create because there's not nothing. Me meeting you. Like, I don't know hometown you. I don't have any prejudice or pre-existing yeah. ideas. It's just like, oh yeah, this is the homie. Like, this is everything you've done. Exactly. When you come to a different setting that you're inspired by, you can show up as the best version of yourself without any other preconceived exactly. notion. So every time I've come back here, I've created the best work I've ever created in my life. Every time. Wow. Which is just like, excelled like my career, like, I guess on social media and now commercially. Do you think that that changes if you like permanently move here? I don't know. I, I like, I really like Toronto a lot though. Yeah. I don't want to move here completely. Right. I would rather come a bunch of times. Yeah. And then go back home. Cause I, I like, I really enjoy living with my parents and my parents yeah. are cool. Yeah. Like, I mean, like a lot of people are like, I got to move out because like, I need to find myself. It's like, nah, like I like my parents. Like, yeah, they're pretty tight. Like, yeah, yeah they could be annoying, but like, I don't mind. Like, dude, I, I, I completely feel you. I used to tour with bands and I think I stopped touring around 25 and it wasn't until I left, stopped touring that I, I moved out because I was like, I was happy to come home after all that travel to yeah. them and kick it with them. I was like, I like these people. They're yeah. really fun. <laughs> you really got me thinking in real time because I know that feeling. I know that when I go out and travel, I can be my best self. And it's like, it's you become the person that you want to be. And no one, it's just what you said. No one else knows that. Exactly. So you're just you. You're your best version of yourself. You're inspired to create. And now I think about it. And I come from Florida. I've lived here for four or five years. And I'm like, I wonder, like, is that magic a little bit lost? And am I a little more inspired? when I'm somewhere else and I'm kind of just like talking it out loud with you yeah. right now where I'm like, I, I don't know. Like that's, that's interesting. Cause what you're explaining is really magic. I think you're always going to lose it a little bit because you get comfortable in a, in a place. Right. Right. So I think it's important to travel and just get inspiration. Like I was talking to Daniel Arsham and he yeah. told me, and I was like, what do you get inspiration from? It was traveling. And I was like, you know what? Like it makes sense. Yeah. I was like, no wonder I'm able to create the work I'm able to create just cause I'm able to like live a life I enjoy living and I go back home and I'm like pumped. Yeah. And that fiber is still there. Yeah. I can do it back home as well. Right. Which is important. That's a really, like, I just, I love this. I love when I, when I do this podcast and I learn a new perspective or I, I think a little bit differently and what you just shared is something that no one has quite expressed like that, where that's the value of travel and yeah. that's what investing in yourself is, is exactly. you knew that you would be creatively inspired here. You knew that you'd meet people here that would unlock pieces and yeah. that you'd, you'd make some of your best work. Exactly. So you just did it. Like you didn't wait for permission. No. You didn't wait for a job. You didn't wait for a contract. Just you just came and did it. Yeah. That's the valuable lesson. Yeah. And you can do that everywhere. Yeah. Because I don't think for you, as you continue to evolve, you'll become accustomed to LA and yeah. you'll probably have to push yourself to travel in other oh, places sure. and yeah. meet other people to continue that spark and that fire. Yeah, I agree. That's fucking cool. But I think that it is so important to continue doing that. 
And I think that a lot of people could take something out of that lesson. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be like, you don't have to go to LA or like Toronto. You can go to anywhere. Like, even if it's just going to the forest with the family, like yeah. on a camping trip, like just like stuff like that to de really detach yes. from where you're at and yes. like put yourself in an uncomfortable situation in new places. That's where you kind of learn a lot more about yourself as well. Yeah, dude, that's huge. Okay, so the last part of the podcast that I want to talk about is what we experienced at South by in Texas. I really want to dig in. You got that email. You get the call from them. I want to hear your lead up, your story, picking the car up in LA, your drive out there, what it felt like to get there, what stood out to you. Like, tell me just that story. I got that email and I thought it was fake. Yeah. And I was like, no way, this is legit. Yeah. And then I hopped on the meeting and I was like, okay, this is pretty legit. Yeah. Who was it? Marco and Marlies? Or was no, it? No, it was, uh, it was Lena and, and Oh, and Lena Marit, and Moritz. Moritz. And they're like, and, yeah. from uh, Amsterdam, Berlin. They're like, hey, like you're our, our top candidate. And I was like, what? Uh -huh. I was like, I, I ended the call. I screamed. <laughs> I was like jumping for joy. Like I, I couldn't contain myself. Yeah. But I couldn't tell anyone. So I went crazy. Yeah. You were just like smiling like ear to smiling. ear. I was like, why like, are you in such a good mood? Like, You're like, don't worry about it. I was like, yeah. And like, it's hard to like tell people because people like people are like, yo, Angel, like, let's hang out. Can't. What are you doing next week? Oh, I got some job. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 When are you, when are you going to be free? No idea. And then I left. No one knew. They're like, what? Like you just do? So I was like, yup. <laughs> I didn't tell anyone. I just, like, I just, shit. I just like, I just cut. So it wasn't really until you start posting and this goes up on Porsche that people were like, oh, that's where you're at? Yeah. It's funny because I, on the Thursday, like on the 2nd, March 2nd, I had a critique. You had a what? Um, like a critique. So for my, oh. for my school, we do a presentation of your yeah. work. Oh yeah. What the fuck? You're in school right now. Yeah, How are I you know. doing this? I don't know, man. <laughs> I have no idea. I missed three weeks, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we'll figure it out there. But yeah. So I was doing my critique. And then my teacher was like, yeah, really good work. And then I left the next day. And then no one knew. And then like everyone's messaging me like, yo, what's happening? And it's I'm actually kind of happy I left. I changed my LA number. Yeah. So no one can message me. So all that noise is gone. Oh, my I God. I just get to focus. And oh it was like, great. God. So leading up to it, I got the car. It was like, sick. It was like, nice 911 Porsche. Yeah. Year 85 convertible top. Yep. I was like, yo, I can't believe I'm driving this. Yeah. I can't believe I'm doing work for Porsche. Like yeah. getting the car was like, whoa. The road trip was really fun because I was able to create some cool photos. I was just able to just do my thing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I really want to hit home. When this post goes live, I want it to be so fire. Yes. That people like will like be like, yo, like I saw what you did and I remember that. Or inspires other people to, yeah. to do it. And got the car, did the big drive. And then once I got to to Austin, Texas, and I met up with Lena and everybody, and just seeing the booth, it like hit me like a bus. Really? I was like, oh my God. You're like, oh, I'm, this is fucking real. I'm working for Porsche. Oh, this yeah. This is fucked. Wow. I was like, there's, why, like, what am I doing here? Yeah. And it, it hit, and like, and I like, I got emotional because, like, all the years I've wanted to just do something really big. Yeah. Like, cause I've always seen my mentor, my mentor with like huge jobs. Like we've done stuff for Maddie Matheson, New York times. Wow. And I was like, I hope that like, I get a feeling like that. Like this is yeah, cool. Cause yeah. he's used to it. Yes. You get used to stuff like that. You right? do. You do. And this was like the, like, the, like for me, I was like, like, this is for me. Like I can soak this in. Uh, and it was, it was like, it hit home. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. That's so validating. Yeah. All the years, all the work, Every, all of perfecting your craft yeah. and it gets seen. And it's like, it's also like nice. Cause now I can like, the haters can't say anything. Nothing. It won't phase me. Like people would be like, yo, you suck. Cool. I suck. Whatever. I'll move on with my life and I'll be yeah. happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I just did like the biggest thing that's going to pivot my career. Yeah. And it's like, it's it's yeah unbelievable i that's it's still like incredible it still hits home just to be able do you to, feel a pressure now to level up your work all the time god dude isn't that the worst it's like no because it's not okay i love that okay so like once i started meeting like peter mckinnon or yeah. like a bunch of my youtube friends like north borders who's like og like car photographer and my other friend seventh era also youtuber just meeting all these people i'm like all right like i have to put a standard Cause they they know me for my work and they like my work. Yeah, that it matters what I put out. It yeah. can't just be mediocre anymore. Yeah. So I always have to feel like I have to step up. Just because I'm like I have like the biggest inspiration for people that they look up to know me, and like we're friends. 
So I got to impress them yeah. because then it's going to impress everyone else. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, it's like nice pressure because like I always have to do more and I have to be better and I have to be and I have to take better photos and all this and that. I love it. I love that drive. It, keeps uh, me, it just it keeps me going. That that like inspires me. Like hearing you explain that, I'm like, oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good because you never want to get lazy. You never want to no, get comfortable. No, 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 never. And you don't have that. No, I got. You can't. I can't yeah. afford it. Like, yeah, I got comfortable. You can lose it all tomorrow. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm in the rooms for a reason. I'm in the rooms, mm -hmm. and I'm meant to be there. Mm -hmm. So I have to shine because then I can let other people come in too. Yeah. Uh. That's so good. Yeah. But it's, it's crazy, dude. Like not even to be like the older guy in the room, but it's like, no. fuck dude, I'm 32. I have 10 years on you. And it's, it's the feeling that I get in talking to you right now is I by no means feel old. I feel like every day I still have to prove it. Oh, for sure. But I remember so fucking well the feeling of 22 year old Andrew. And it's that same tenacity and it's that energy of just like it, I must, right? Yeah. And to me, I don't feel threatened by the next generation. I feel inspired. Like the For more sure. I talk to you, the more I hear that, it reminds me of that. And I think everyone should keep that going. No I, one should be like, oh, now I'm older. It's not yeah. like that. Fuck that. We yeah. have to keep doing it. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you sharing that again. Because I don't give a fuck. Like people are like, oh, you're young. You're just saying that now. Like fuck that. Yeah, no, no. Exactly. Like that needs to stay there yeah, forever. For sure. yeah, yeah, like I guess like it's a weird feeling when people come up. Yeah. Be like, yo, you inspire me. Those words from like a from someone you don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it does, but it, it, it's like it's like Mike Tyson punching you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it like hits so home. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's more than me as well. Because yeah. it's like, all right, there's other people that inspired to create and do photography. Yeah. Just like how I was inspired. I gotta pay back to the community. Right. And I like, you know, there's other people like I don't share and I like gatekeep. I hate that. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah. What do you do? And this is how I do it. Right. I mean, like it's gonna take you a while to learn it, but I don't mind. Like I'll tell you how I do it. Actually today I went to a car meet. Yeah. And someone came up to me and goes, Yo, I'm a big fan. Like, can I watch you shoot? No problem. Because I know what it's like to just see someone you look up to. Yeah. And getting an opportunity to just see them, even if it's it's like the same as like what their friend does. Yeah. It's a different feeling. Comes back to being a visual learner. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a different feeling of just connecting with someone like that and also being able to watch someone in their craft. Yeah. For you to be able to like, oh wow, like that's how I do it. Like, like I do the same thing. Yes. Why can't I do yes. it? You know what I mean? It gives you permission. Exactly. That's a uh, man, dude. I did this one episode. Dude, it was just this 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 takeaway, right? seeing somebody else do it, right? My homie, Nico Ivanov, Nico Ivanov. He saw the Never Say Never Justin Bieber documentary. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh my God, like this is a career, this is possible. And I loved the way he said it, was it's not this thing where you're discouraged, it's not this thing like this person is better than you, it's that somebody else showed you success and that now gives you permission to go do it. Exactly. So you're paying that forward. Someone else sees you shoot, they're inspired by you. Can I watch you shoot? Absolutely. You're yeah. giving them permission to become that version of themselves. For sure. I yeah. mean, all the time I try to do the best to pay back to the community. That's sick. Whatever it is. Even if it's just like saying hi or yeah. just like just like taking the time to answer the questions. Just like anything. Like I talk to a bunch of my other friends who uh, have their own communities and they're pretty big on social media. And they always tell me, like I'm one of the smaller ones compared to them. And they're like, man, I'm so jealous because your community is so dialed in. Ugh. They're like, they're like, you, they're so, you're so connected with them. Like you, like, and like, if someone comes to me, like, I remember you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're cool as fuck. It's just yeah. like shit like that. But like, they're like, I guess people take it for the, the wrong reasons. Uh -huh. Like for me, it was never like my parents all the time. It's so funny. They're like, they're like, tell the friends about me and they'll like call me, but like, oh, like your mom was telling me that you're famous. Like, no, no, no. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. I'm just like, I'm just a guy yeah. who likes getting tacos yeah. with like cheese. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just a regular guy that just likes to eat. Yeah. You know, maybe too much, but. <laughs> is the food better here in LA? Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Dude, it's the Toronto food is kind of, kind of mid. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. Here it's really good. That's but yeah. Funny. So like, I think it's just important to be yourself really. Yeah. And not get too too ahead of yourself with your ego. I mean, like for me, like I am grateful for everything that has happened. Like with social media has really launched my career. Without that, like I would not be in the position I'm at, like working for Porsche, like all these other brands I've worked with. For sure, I am grateful for that. But like at the end of the day, like I just, I'm just another human. My brother and I were talking about like, they're like, these kids think you're cool. But like behind the scenes, I'm a loser. Like, you know what I mean? Like they don't know how much of a goof I am. Right. 
I know. Well, that's also why it's cool to like do a podcast. Like, thank you for sharing all of this because I think, again, talking about being a visual learner, like I believe I learn so much from people that I look up to by hearing interviews from them. For sure. And when it when I hear people don't take themselves too seriously and like where it's just like, yeah, I love my thing that I do, but I promise you I'm just a human. Like, yeah, it kind of maybe takes a little bit of pressure off people or it, I don't know, it just breaks walls down, which I really like, which is so cool to hear you share. What do you think is next? Like, what do you in inspired by you're about to graduate school about to graduate school which is I'm, I'm happy about that thank god i yeah. mean so much more time is gonna be like opened up my goal is just to work a lot yeah i just want to like just work yeah just create cool art that's all i really care about that's all i always ever wanted to do so yeah i think what's next is just i guess putting my name out there more i want my career to keep going yeah in a, in a way where I can support like other people that I really care about. Yeah, like, the way support. that you had mentors that were exactly. able to pay you and exactly to, like, like I, I can like you know start help getting assistance and like inspiring them. Yeah. Also taking care of my parents. It's also a very big goal of mine. Yeah, and just like you know enjoying the fruits of my labor. In yeah, a sort of way. So yeah, I think it's just getting more into the automotive industry. I guess putting more, st more myself out there where it inspires more people. Yeah, creating YouTube videos, just a bunch of different other stuff I have planned out. Like what currently inspires you? Like, what are you looking at right now where you're like, fuck, sick? I think, I think right now what currently inspires me is just fulfilling my childhood dream. Because I, I had a rough growing up. So just like looking back at my younger self and being like, it's okay. Like, like everyone told you you're not going to do anything. You're not going to be anything. But like, you're going to be just fine. Oh, that's so fucking good. Yeah. Dude, that's beautiful. That's Thank beautiful. You. I'm so happy we got to talk right now in this moment too, like right after the Porsche thing. Like yeah, it's such like a milestone. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm grateful that you reached out. Oh my god, and asked me to be a part of this. Like, absolutely, this is this is pretty absolutely. sick. Absolutely, and I always say it. It's like for for people that are continuing to grow and perfect the craft, and like I, I know it's only going to go up from here. So it's like, who knows, like a couple years now, later, we come and do another podcast yeah. and we joke about like, oh, remember when we were talking about this? Like, <laughs> it's so cool. The idea, it's only up from here, but to capture this moment in time is, is really special. For sure. Yeah. Uh, where can everyone keep up with you? Keep up with me on uh, IG, TikTok, and YouTube shortly. Um, Ijo Flaco, H-I-J-O-F-L-A-C-K-O. That's my handle and that will forever be my handle. Let's go. Ijo Flaco. That's right. Fuck yeah, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>